Welcome to Beer and Politics. We are your disinterested hosts, Ryan and Ryan. Today we're discussing the race card, not to be confused with the race car. <laughs> but of course, before we do, Madam Brewmaster, what do we have on tap today? Today we have Vengeful Spirit IPA from Stone Brewing. Vengeful Spirit. This is an unfiltered IPA brewed with pineapple and mandarin orange. So an IPA is going to be usually around 7% alcohol. By, by definition of the style, it's going to have more malt and a lot more hops. So it should be kind of grassy, should be kind of bright. It's, like I said, it's going to pack that little bit of punch with that extra little bit of booze in there. What do you think? Yum. <laughs> I like this quite a lot. It's really refreshing. You get all that citrus in there. Uh, I mean, it represents IPAs in general well. It's very hoppy. It's interesting you said grassiness because I didn't really think about it until you said it, but there's certainly that grassiness to it. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy the citrus flavors that I'm picking up on this. It's not overpowering. It's super bright and fun. I agree. I think this is actually a really good, really good beer. So this is a seasonal. It's a limited release, so you can only pick it up for a limited amount of time. Um, but yeah, this is also unfiltered yeah. for an IPA, which is great. So you can probably see it. You can see that extra level of cloudiness. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give us a little more depth. It's going to keep in all the stuff that would have been filtered out. Mm -hmm. So we get a fuller flavor. It's, it is, it's still bright. It's got that great hop taste. It's got great aroma to it as well. And the pineapple and mandarin sing. Yeah. I agree. So what would you, uh, what would you give this? Well, in honor of the citrus flavors, I'm going to give it four and a half OJ Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it tickled my fancy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and I think this is I think this is great as well. I'm also going to give this. I'm going to give this four and a half knives. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> they go together. Yeah. Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Or glove hand in glove. <laughs> or hand in gut. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> great. Thanks. So thank you very much to Stone Brewing, who Absolutely. of course doesn't sponsor us. Still not. Yep. Nope. But thanks, we drink their beer. Yeah. All right, so we're discussing the race card. Um, this came to us, uh, we were having a conversation with a friend of ours, and uh, this person, like many people out there today, they're tired of hearing about racism, about the race card being played all the time. So we want to kind of address our thoughts on it. This is a happy hour special, so slightly less research, but still sensibly research, mm. and pretty much off the cuff here. So I actually have no idea what he's going to say. So what are your thoughts? So I think that largely we see people frustrated with the race card being played are, well, white people mainly, <laughs> of course. And I think the reason that we're seeing it more now, mm -hmm. we'll say the race card being played mm -hmm. more now, is because with the advent and the increase of social media, a lot of black people or a lot of people of color have a platform and a voice that they've never had before. How dare they? So, so when you think of, think about it, if you've looked at the evening news for a very long period of time, mm -hmm. the evening news is, of course, there's black anchors, don't yeah. get me wrong, but it's predominantly white people. When you look at television in general, it's predominantly white people. You look at ads, you look at anything, it's predominantly white people. Well, I was watching BET and it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh Case closed. <laughs> done and no, done. No, racism's over. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I think a lot of this is, <laughs> is actually people saying what they've always been saying. Yeah. But now we're able to hear it. Yeah. And, and I think the reason that people don't like it is because they've largely been isolated from it, mm -hmm. which I would say is a privilege that a white person has. Mm. So... I think they really don't like it because it's largely uncomfortable. Would you ever call that white privilege? I actually would call it that. Huh, white good. privilege. I like that. But but it's it's uncomfortable to hear about it because yeah. we've been in a sort of a bubble yep. thinking that things are merry and moving mm -hmm. along quite well. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we hear a lot of people of color saying, screw you. Yep. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's really pretty spot on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tackle this a little bit differently in that it, I'm gonna tackle it from a frustration perspective. Okay. So, so he objectively, I say objectively, frankly, uh, talked about, I think, why we feel the way we feel. Uh, the problem people have with the race card being played, um, is that, is that all the emotion behind it, mm. right? We thought we had resolved this, white people. As you, as you said. As a whole. Yeah, as a whole. We, we're like, oh, everybody's fair and equal, all the opportunity. And now people are yelling at us. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's this coming from? 
So there's a lot of emotion behind it. And every time something happens, we hear it, and we hear it with the emotion. We see protests, we see violence, we see property damage. We see an awful lot of stuff that we don't understand, and you're just screaming racism at us. And and we're perplexed, and we're, we just want you to calm down and tell us everything's okay. And so we don't get the emotion. And then what happens is now that things are amped up, right? You know, one of the things I didn't talk about is while I am okay with taking down the Confederate statues because I don't see the point in having them because I think they're clearly racist, mm. I don't know if that's where our priority should be placed when tackling all the actual racist issues that are happening in this country today. And we're getting really worked up about statues. Meanwhile, we got, you know, uh, a disproportionate number of black people going to jail and <laughs> prison. It's something that's symbolic. Yeah. Rather than something that's actual. Right. So, okay. So people just keep saying it's racism and there's all this emotion and then the white people don't understand and they say, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Can we talk about this academically? Even though we don't really want to talk about it academically <laughs> either. But that's at least, you know, how, how we look at it. And then what we get is noise. It's just noise to us. And here is a problem that we run into. And it's not just with the race card. It's with a lot of things that we don't want to discuss. The noise ends up being like the boy who cried wolf, all right? So even if we're willing to allow that, yeah, racism exists today, but we think it's quite small and we'd be happy to discuss it. Every time you bring it up with this emotion and you destroy some stuff, we get really irritated. And then we say, I don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't. And not only do we not believe you, we go out of our way to deflect. Well, there's racism. Well, there's also sexism. Okay, it's like, you know, Black Lives Matter. The Saying all lives matter is the same as saying if I said I want to fight colon cancer, and you're like, well, there's also breast cancer. <laughs> well, yeah, there's both, but let's talk about yeah, one at a time right uh, now. Yeah, I'm trying to talk about colon cancer. Right, exactly. So Black Lives Matter is something that we can talk about without bringing in other and, other groups. And it's largely a reminder. Right. <laughs> like, if you say, <laughs> if you put the word to or yeah. also at the end, right. maybe you'll understand. They're like, no, 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 hey, Black Lives Matter also. Also. Yeah, like, that's great. It just, it, just does, it just doesn't sound as good. Additionally, as in case you've forgotten, maybe <laughs> which, it should be BLMA. <laughs> which... <laughs> Bilma. Bilma. Yeah. So yeah. Which statistically you probably have forgotten. <laughs> yes, you have. So we get, we're, we're, it all becomes the boy who cried wolf. And what we do, so we start deflecting. And then what we do is we find ways to pretend the wolf isn't there anymore. That's the thing. So what we forget in the story about the boy who cried wolf, what happened to the boy eventually? Uh, he got eaten by a big fucking wolf. Right. So the wolf attacks. All right. No, was it the sheep, Madam Brewmaster? What happened? You were shaking your head. Oh, he, I was... Because of my cussing? Oh, okay, cool. Word. So the boy was eaten, according to Madam Brewmaster. And it doesn't matter if the boy was, frankly. We do know the wolf attacked something. It at least ate the sheep. Yes, it ate the sheep, if not the boy. And the thing is, we're so distracted and so, so trying hard to say, there is no wolf. When the wolf is right there, we ignore it. <laughs> we say, sorry, you've played that wolf card too many times. There is no racism. Even though it's right there, it's kind of like a catch in football. We don't know what a catch is anymore. <laughs> you know, we go through instant replay after instant <laughs> replay, and we and we try to define it. And we watch, and we're like, "Well, did he make a football move? Whatever that is, you <laughs> right. know." And sometimes you just want to say, "Can we just watch it at regular motion?" Yeah, then, watch it and see what happened. Yeah, and you say, "Ah, oh, that guy caught the ball." Or you, you can do that with race and say, "Oh, you know, we can sit here academically and discuss and discuss, but sometimes it's just really racism." And it's just really a wolf. And you don't have to work hard to disprove either. You can see it. It's there. And again, might be small, maybe low priority, but we get in this habit of trying to pretend it doesn't, it's not there. It doesn't exist. And that's a pet peeve of mine because we're lying to ourselves when we could just be honest and say we don't care. Or it's lower on our priority. <laughs> Say, listen, I understand you want to take down the statues. Maybe you guys should be working. Maybe we should be working together, God forbid, <laughs> on figuring out what's going on with the justice system and why it's so disproportionately negative towards minorities. And I think one of the other things that we, that we see is that we want to, we want to pretend that everything's fine and we want to pretend yeah. that these things aren't happening because it makes us feel better about our complacency. Sure. Because if these things are really that horrible and we've been doing nothing and, and want to do nothing still, we probably feel like shitty people. Right. Uh, absolutely. We don't want to feel like shitty people. And, you know, his whole thing was like, well, I want to do more research. I want to do more research. And like, well, maybe it's this. Well, maybe, maybe it's a lot of things, man. But we know it's disproportionately affecting people of 
a different race than white. Mm. Right. Even if you don't understand the intent, even if you're confused about how it's doing it, maybe they're not doing it on purpose. When we say that it's not disproportionately affecting someone, we're lying. Yes. Right. Why don't you just tackle that? We get so spun up on it's not being a race card that we don't focus on fixing the problem. That's what we should be doing. Just acknowledge there's a problem. That's step one. Mm -hmm. Then fix it or alternatively say we'll get to it eventually when and if I care. At least be honest, then we know you're an asshole and not an idiot. <laughs> There's a difference. Yeah. Small, but it's there. All right. Final final call. I'm Last round? Gonna, I'm just going to chime in real quick. Yeah. Um, the wolf did not eat the boy. It just ate the entire flock of sheep. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. See, I was probably thinking Brothers Grimm, because I bet yeah. he probably ate him and his family. That's too. why I went nice and vague and said, it ate something. <laughs> because I didn't think it ate the boy either. I think the whole point was the sheep, but that's fine. Yeah. So, decently researched, Madam Brewmaster. Well done. <laughs> all right. I want to thank you all for watching. Yeah, absolutely. And until next time, remember, it's just beer and politics. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on social media. Links can be found below. You can get all our episodes as a podcast on your favorite platform. Here are a couple videos we think you might enjoy. Until next time, remember, it's just beer and politics.